Hello, my name is Rich Howard, owner of Architectural Builder Supply. This video is to bring you a closer look at the Irwin. This is their part number 3073004 bimetal hole saw kit is what this is. Okay. Let's talk about what this kit is for. So clearly it's a general purpose hole saw kit. And I say that because, well, it says <laughs> general purpose hole saw kit. Um, I'm a big fan of hole saws for cutting um, lots of different items, meaning, you know, there's different tools that you can use to cut things, wood or metal, whatever it might be. So let's do a tour of the uh, kit itself and a, a padded uh, zipper case. I think back in the old days, this would have, <laughs> the real old days, this would have been a metal case, but nonetheless, I think it's reasonably durable. All right, so let's take a look and see what's included in here. Okay, we've got a number of different hole saws. I believe it's called the 17 piece kit. So let's let's count out the hole saws. Two, four, six, eight, ten. You got 12 hole saws. You've got three replacement arbor bits. That's 15. The larger arbor and the smaller arbor, meaning there's a cutoff size. It might be inch and a quarter. You go smaller than inch and a quarter, you use the smaller arbor. And the larger arbor is used when you have these. Well, actually, no, we can prove it. If you see the hole saws that have the holes down inside of them, like here, they've got some, you know, four holes. You see the smaller ones that don't have that. The smaller ones are the ones that use the smaller arbor. And then the replacement arbor bits themselves. Um, I am a, as I had said earlier, I am a... Uh, unapologetic fan of the hole saw because the work that I do is door related, whether it be steel door or wood door related. And we routinely need to cut two and an eighth inch holes or inch and a half holes or other size holes. And I will always use a hole saw when I can because it forces you to drill straight. You know immediately if you're not drilling straight down because the way that you score the face of the door as you initially start cutting won't be consistent around the circumference of the hole saw. Okay, So I like that because it, I know that I'm starting it straight. The nature of the unit itself is cylindrical so that when I'm drilling a wood door I know I'm drilling. It's hard to drill you know, not exactly straight with a hole saw. When you're using a drill press, same concept. It's really nice to be able to drill. You're going to drill straight down, but you're going to know that you are drilling straight through. I also like hole saws because they get the job done really well. I mean, just drilling mild steel or wood um, and this, the height of, I think, what's called the gullet, the height of the tooth and its pitch are both very agreeable to the work that I end up doing. Um, when I'm cutting metal, I do not... Um, Pardon me. When I'm cutting metal, I always use a thread cutting fluid or a lubricant. Uh, when I'm cutting wood, it is what it is. I slow the RPM. Maybe the RPM gets a little bit faster when I'm doing wood. With metal, I like to go a little bit slower. Um, and I'll show you where some RPM information is about that material. The only downside of using these for wood is you usually need to get that core taken out of there after you've drilled into it. So that core has to come out. That's the only downside. Speaking of downsides, this for me personally would be a perfect kit if it included a two and an eighth inch hole saw, which it does not. So I always need a two and an eighth because that is so lock related. Inch and a half, yes, two and an eighth. Other sizes are good as well if you're drilling function holes in steel doors or in wood doors for locks. Three quarter inch, one inch, you know, different sizes that you're not going to use a jobber's length or a twist style uh, drill bit. Uh, you'll end up using a hole saw. My opinion is, dollar for dollar, a, a kit like this is an extremely effective way to get a lot of different sizes, um, uh, size holes drilled. So let's set this aside. Let's hop into or to the screen view, and we're going to take a closer look uh, at the supporting information. Before we do that, um, there, I'll show you this image. It's down below. You'll be able to stare at both sides. Unfortunately, it doesn't have any RPR, RPM recommendations, but actually, um, I'm going to pause this video and show you something real quick. And what, did I wanted to, and what I wanted to grab off the shelf was an individual. This happens to be a 2 and an eighth, And it shows here cutting speeds, or RPM. And let's get the camera to focus on that box. 
RPM. Okay. Wood up at the top. Mild steel down near the center. I'll slow it down for, for metal. Speed it up a little bit for wood. Okay. Stainless way down at the bottom. What makes stainless steel so difficult to cut is it's an elastic material. It really stretches before it breaks when you're cutting it. So those RPMs are listed, those RPM ratings are listed there. It really has a lot to do with it in the, uh, I happen to know a little bit about that in the pursuit of studying locksmithing, the science that goes into how to service safes and vaults is absolutely dependent on what you're drilling, what you're drilling into, what's the safe made of, what you're using to drill into it, and the speed that you're drilling at, and the force that you're drilling at. There is extreme, it, there's like, there is so much science in that area, it's as if there's ballast theory for a nuclear submarine. It's extremely detailed, um, and success is definitely dependent on, you know, those four factors. Now, you know, you drill a two and an eighth inch hole for a deadbolt for the little old lady from Pasadena. You're not getting technical. But the point of the matter is those factors all conspire to give you better success rather than less better success. Let's switch to the screen view and let's look at the supporting information. If you are enjoying this video, please click thumbs up or like, and also please consider subscribing to our channel. Let's move on to the rest of the video. Here's the item that we are looking at. Images, let's look at those first. That's the sizes that are included. That's a list of the sizes that are included. There's that case. It's a carrying handle there. A very dense uh, foam that separates everything. A, this might be the two inch that I pulled out of the box. Another set of photographs are here. The larger arbor that comes in and out to get those posts in and out of your hole saw. The smaller arbor and then the replacement drill bits for the arbor. Flattened on one side because there is a set screw here that tightens that down inside of the arbor. And there you go. Extended description information down below contains the most commonly used sizes for general purpose. Sure, I personally find some of these very, I'll never use them, um, you know, is the bottom line. Um, you know, they should have a, Irwin should have a situation where you can specify your own general purpose kit and they'll make that for you. Because where are you going to stick the two and an eighth? Yeah, you can nest it inside of the three inch, but, um, you know, it's not what you want to do. Clearly printed hole saw sizes for quick retrieval and added productivity. Bimetal construction for toughness and long life. I find great success with mild steel and wood. Product brochure, let's take a look at that. Before we do, let's copy our part number. Do a uh, control F on your keyboard once that product catalog pulls up and you'll get to the page where you can see the bimetal hole saw kit. So we're dealing with the 04 version, 17 piece general purpose kit. Okay. On this page, you'll find the individual sizes should you need to augment that kit. So in my instance, two and an eighth, well, here's my part number. So I can order the 3073004 and I can uh, then pick up the two and an eighth. There you go. The rest of this catalog, it's called Linear Edge. Um, I have to admit, I'm really not sure what they refer to by that. But obviously, we're seeing sawzall blades, uh, bimetal hole saws or hole saws. Speaking of locks, a door installation kit. I've never used this, but I see these for sale on the uh, general purpose home improvement stores. Um, anyway, talking about what you do to do a what you do to prep a door for a lock is um, outside of this conversation. There is a link below this video as seen here to the manufacturer's page. And from here, you can pull up not only all of the uh, Irwin products that we sell by means of this horizontal navigation as seen here, 
There's also a link to the manufacturer's website as seen here. Also a link to their most current product catalog. Um, unfortunately, they haven't produced one that I'm aware of in many, many years. But I am grateful for ha to have the one that we do have. Let's wrap up this video on camera. If you've not hit subscribe yet, we would very much appreciate if you did, and hopefully you're enjoying this video. Now, let's get back to it. Now, I'm partial to Irwin. It's not only because I'm a distributor, but because I use their products personally, and I can attest to the high performance of much of the product line. Um, weighs about 4.1 pound, so um, you know, it gives you an idea of the weight of it, I suppose, is what I'm driving at. Okay. Good quality product. Um, I personally own, you know, own that kit and, um, you know, could buy whole saws from lots of different people. Other, historically, I've used whole saws by other manufacturers uh, many, many years ago. But, you know, the Irwin's pricing is just really good on the material. And I find that the performance and the price, the confluence of those two values, you know, I end up not looking elsewhere. Any questions on this Irwin? I have forgotten the part number. It is 3073004, general purpose whole saw kit or any other Irwin product. Please feel free to reach out to us and thank you. Again, thank you for watching. And if you've enjoyed this video, please click thumbs up. Please subscribe and maybe even send the video to someone that you know. Thank you.